So today I'm going to be connecting with Isis Wisdom and we're going to be talking about ascension, self-mastery, and spiritual warfare. Now, this is a really important conversation to have right now um, because many of us are experiencing different things that bring up triggers, that bring up unresolved traumas and can create um chaos in our reality. So everything uh, me and Isis are going to be talking about today is to equip you with the tools, the knowledge, the information, and the consciousness to navigate your current time space reality. And she is here and I'm going to add her. Okay. Hey, sis, how are good. you? Hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing I'm pretty so good. good. I'm just so trying to make sure his light's this. okay. You? Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. So it's so funny. Uh, people have been I'm... asking us to do this for a while, not even knowing that we are like, we're like this. I thought it was funny too. <laughs> I was like, just hold on. I said, I got a surprise for y'all. So. Yeah. yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. We were on the phone the other day, guys, for like three hours, just catching up, talking about all the things going down on the planet right now. So, you know, I know one of our objectives today was to talk about ascension. And I guess I'll start off with asking you, um, what's your perspective on what's happening with the planet right now and what what's happening um, people, on a collective level i feel like there is an energy that's being set out on the planet for healing right now at this time um i feel like we're giving time i feel like there's a massive cleanup actually that's taking place on the planet as well i actually got some hits about that today um i feel like the frequency especially the thing that just happened with um the human resonance it kind of gave me confirmation that we're being put on a higher timeline. Now, what yeah. comes with that though, when you start getting into the higher timelines, mm -hmm. that means that you have to release things that you haven't healed from. Because you can't go into the higher timelines when you're still carrying around baggage, Absolutely. or you're still carrying around hurt, you're still carrying around pain. So on a collective level, I feel like that that's going on. I feel like the people are tired. I feel like, I feel like the people are looking for something a lot more meaningful um i see a lot of groups of people that are coming together on a soul tribe level um i see don't get it don't get it twisted there are some negative things that are going on but what i'm the way i'm seeing it now is different it seems to me that there's something that's out trumping the negative energy something that's out trumping it something's out trumping it and i can see that i've been reading the energy yes and i said <laughs> it's looking, it looking a little crazy but it seems like <laughs> after that thing happened with the human resonance and even beforehand i would say probably about a month ago i would say i started seeing the changes and the effects that was going on with the people about a month ago but after that human resonance i started seeing it really seeing it seeing it and really seeing now the veils lifted so i'm also seeing other things that's not seen to the naked eye so i see a lot of beings that are going to work i see all kinds of different people mm -hmm. that are doing their part as far as the work is concerned i feel like the vibration on the planet is getting higher and higher so um i i feel i feel positive i feel very positive about this change that's happening right now yeah i'm in total agreement and alignment with that i feel like these uh, my team is calling, they're calling them solar frequency shockwaves. So these energies that are coming from the galactic central sun are amplifying the frequency of the planet. So what happens is it gives people an opportunity yes. to access certain timelines that perhaps they didn't have access to. So when we kind of go into these, uh, these quantum ascension, ascension portals, it's like a window of opportunity mm -hmm 
to shift into higher density really quickly. But that also means that all yes. of your unresolved stuff is going to come up really quickly, right? Yeah. And that can be um, that can be scary for people who feel like they have been doing the work. And it's like, why is something from five years ago that I thought I resolved coming up? You know, I know for myself, I've been having some things um, resurface, but I, I want to give everyone this perspective. It's almost like an opportunity for you to revisit something through a higher lens so you actually alchemize it on a deeper level so it really like fully leaves the body it fully leaves your um your subconsciousness so if you look at it as a gift and an opportunity for higher expansion and you're just sitting in neutrality exactly um, you don't have to resist exactly. it and create more now i want to say something yourself. real quick so any of my followers that are on this live right now yeah. could you guys do me a favor and record this live i want to post it on my discord so those who didn't get a chance to catch it <laughs> i want them to be able to have the opportunity to catch it Yeah, I should be able to save it and have the whole thing. So we should be good. Um, so when it comes to spiritual warfare, we have to talk about that, right? People mm -hmm. do experience spiritual attacks. Spiritual attacks are real. Um, what is your perspective on navigating spiritual attacks and okay. lower Okay, so let me tell you how I used lower, to do with lower things. vibrational energies. Okay. As an initiated E5 priest, one of, that's one of the things I was trained on with spiritual warfare for like 20 years. And at one point in time, you know, I was about the battle life. I was about that life, okay? Um, but as I've gotten older and as I've gotten wiser and as I started getting into the higher, uh, the higher teachings, I started learning about how when you get involved in spiritual warfare, you actually leave an energetic gateway open to these individuals to attack you. That was mm -hmm. something I heard you say, you were speaking on this, I think it was a month or two ago. You were speaking on this. And it gave me some insight because I already knew that I didn't need to entertain the energy anymore. Those attacks stopped coming towards me once I stopped entertaining that energy. Once I didn't make it a part of my reality, once I decided to deal in the higher timelines, it, is, it didn't even matter to me anymore. I wasn't putting any energy on it like that anymore. There was a time of day where I did. So I want to give a message out to people that are in, that are in this. Um, and Lord knows, you know, I've been attacked on many different levels on social media, whether it's verbal attacks, whether it's spiritual attacks, energetic attacks. What do you call it? The, uh, the evil eye, whatever you name it, you name it. I've already experienced those things, right? But after I started really coming to an understanding about the energy connection, things started changing for me. Things started shifting. There was a particular entity, which we're not going to name here, yeah. but I had a conversation with you about that entity. And I was like, I don't, I said, I know there's something with that, <laughs> but why is this entity here? And I had to come to self-realization yeah. that that entity was a, was a part of me. Sure. And so once I realized that that entity was a yes. part of me, yes, 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 I was like, oh, I did, I did kind of like a reconciliation with self in regards to that, and then that entity disappeared, and I never dealt with any. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry guys, I know we're breaking up a little bit. Um, let's get some grounding of technology. Okay. I'm just trying to see if we can ground this technology a little bit. <clears throat> okay, hopefully. Did you hear me really okay? Better. Did you hear okay. me okay? <laughs> yeah, so the, no, no, I, I did. I, I got everything and I wanna just like reiterate it for people. So in recognizing that whatever shadow being you were dealing with was actually a part of yourself, it instantaneously transmuted it the Instantly. experience of Instantly. that reflection. Because all last summer, it was a whole yes. thing last summer and I couldn't understand what that was about. And I'm like, you're back again, and why are you here? You know, but once I, but, but once I, once I came into that understanding, it was like, <laughs> oh, this makes sense now. 
So we're not saying this to negate anyone's spiritual experience because I do understand that people do get spiritually attacked. I don't want to put that out there. That's why I had to put out there about me being a priest because people come to me when they have issues like this to clean that stuff up, to clean them off, to put protection around them in the whole nine. Um, but I'm going to tell you all something. The best protection you could ever get is source. That's the best protection you could ever have is protection yes. of source. And even if you start claiming that everything here is only your shadow, right? If we truly are source and everything is within source, that means nothing has ever been outside of you. And all it takes is remembering that for these entities to not really be able to co-create with you. Like, I mm. see everything. I've learned to see everything as a co-creation. Energetically, I have invited a being into my field with my own frequency, with my own lack of awareness of self. The moment you collapse back into your source, your source self, your source identity, you're no longer sending out these invitations from a place of victimization or ignorance. And now the shadow doesn't exist right so let's say you really are dealing with someone right now and it maybe it's yeah. not even a negative entity it's like an actual person in your physical reality like a narcissist or something like that the moment you say okay this is my own shadow right this is my own shadow that i'm co-creating with um for expansion you shift out of victimization and now the energetics yes. of that entire dynamic and situation is going to change now when we apply that to the collective experience if more people do this individually then collectively we shift to timelines where lower Boom. density beings are not running the show lower density beings have only been running the show on earth because uh the masses have been operating in yeah. unconsciousness and, unawareness. and externalization so of power a collective shadow the power experience. comes from within it's no, it never comes from without it's always been within so if you're externalizing your power, in other yes. words, if you're giving power to something outside of you and you're not recognizing the fact that this is just nothing more than a reflection of who you are, some part in your mind, some part of you is that energetically. And that's a hard thing to swallow <laughs> for some people. I get it because I know I remember when I yes. first discovered that, I was like, hmm. But then as, as I started really looking at it, and I said, damn, this right. is kind of deep because we are magnetic beings. So we're going to attract exactly where we are on the inside. So whatever you're attracting into your life and whatever experiences that you're attracting sure. into your life, nine times out of 10, it's something going on from the inside. So you change your reality on the outside based on you changing eternally. And yes. I think a key element of this is self-love. Um, I think a lot of people in the spiritual community, other teachers and leaders and this type of thing uh, can be very logical and approaching things from mind. And to really transition into higher density, we have to operate from heart. And when you operate from heart, you learn to love your own shadow because it's loving the unhealed pieces of you that just want to be seen that just require alchemy. So let's say you're dealing with someone right now who is reflecting the shadow elements of you. You can work with that reflection as a tool to not only love that person because they're in a state of unawareness, but also love the pieces of you yeah. that were unconsciously also in states of unawareness. And now um, you're, you're like neutralizing that energy. You're, you're transmuting it back into. Yes. Uh, Aaron, let me tell you something. I had a major experience frequency. yesterday and I need to talk to you about this, like off the Instagram, but I had a major, major, major experience yesterday <laughs> um, where I, I called in all aspects of my, myself to return back to me in particular for the malevolent sides of myself to return back to mm. me. Needless to say, that was a powerful experience. Wow. That was something out of this wow. world. Um, because for a long time, I rejected a lot of those aspects of myself. They were scattered about, and I wasn't even aware of this. You know, and I, I found there were some memories that are coming back to me as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. where there were things I did in my past, like past lives, 
where certain things happen and then I got traumatized from it. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to deal with this ever again. So that aspect of myself got kicked to the curb because of that traumatizing experience. And I found out that this had been going on many, 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 many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting because something that comes up a lot for like people in one-on-one -on -one healing sessions with me is let's say if let's say in this incarnation they are here to be some type of spiritual teacher or leader but let's say they did do something um they they did something that they weren't proud of in a previous incarnation and because they haven't fully reconciled with that and that aspect hasn't fully ascended it actually blocks them from assuming uh, their rightful leadership position in this incarnation because it's like the fear of maybe abusing power. I see that a lot. It's like very, very, you know, subconscious or the, the fear of not completing a mission again. All of these past yes. life things. Can yes, and really oh my goodness, you in, just hit the nail on the ways. head. This is crazy. It's like talking to you, like some other like ting, 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 pieces to it. <laughs> And you know what? A lot of people who are listening to this right now were present in the timelines of Atlantis, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, time is an illusion. These timelines are all happening simultaneously now. Uh, but in, in these uh, timelines where there was sort of this battle between feminine and masculine, this sort of battle over nature and technology, that type of thing, a lot of people um, we're on the, the technology side and they're actually back now to prevent us from making the same mistakes. But at the same time, if you are feeling like you're someone who's afraid of your own power, chances are, uh, you did do something in the past, but, um, I'm just feeling like a full sweeping and clearing of this right now. Like it's, it's okay that that happened because anything that happens from the higher self yeah. perspective, we're all just playing out these different, like we're just consciousness having fun, right? We're just playing out these different dramatic scenarios and we're expanding and we're learning and, and the multiverse is expanding. So it's okay. So right now I just see the angelic realm, allowing the pieces of you to ascend that maybe did do some shit, but it's okay. <laughs> So you can be present now and allow yourself. Yes, to and that, your that was actually shown to me in, in, a med in the meditation I did yesterday. I, what you're saying is absolutely correct. But it took me to get to this point to, to come to that. And let me tell you something. Yeah. Before that even happened, I got very emotional, like very, very emotional. And like this, this cry mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. And I do share my experiences with my audience and with my people. Because I like I like to um, show the vulnerable side to myself. Because I want people to understand that these, this healing is in phases, and, and I'm a, and I'm a strong advocate of healing. And this, this these tears just started flooding. I had this this cry. I can't even begin to explain to you. It was like deep down, like in the gut, like deep down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's like like a you know, I had this, uh, we probably experienced it in close proximity. It's like an ancestral cry too. Like when it's so deep, it's like, it's not just coming from you. It's coming from all of these beings and these energies that are also asking for reconciliation. Yeah, it was definitely, through it, it was definitely so an like, ugly cry. You know, like it definitely cry, was that. You know I mean? And my son, <laughs> Esoteric Truth, was in the room and he was just there, he was just there to be supportive of me because I had called him to come downstairs. I said, I need you to come downstairs. I was so just... I was just, I was, I was so emotional, but that cry, like I literally screamed at the top of my lungs and let that out. And it came from like, like deep down, I even felt the heart, I even felt some stuff from the heart space move around, like something left. Um, and that yeah. was before I did the reconciliation yeah. with all the different versions of myself. And that was needless to say, was one powerful experience. And it's like, right now I'm just, I'm just in my own energy right now and just kind of like just just letting things just reset themselves and just processing right now what's going on with me right now just kind of processing it but yeah that's a that's a powerful thing right there that healing is something serious
And I think it's so powerful what you're saying about essentially making peace with all of these aspects of ourselves, because when you think about the true essence of source, um, it's unconditional love. And like I always tell my people, unconditional love is really just the acceptance of everything. Um, every possible experience that has happened across all timelines, spaces, and dimensions, source has to hold um, love for that because they are all valid within the experience of creation. They are all valid with consciousness expressing and experiencing itself. And when we bring that down to the ground, to the micro level of what we experience here on earth, we have to be willing to accept those versions, of yeah. versions and all of yeah. everyone else's and I love when too. you said, you know, about those particular yeah. aspects and how they're valid. Those malevolent aspects are valid. You know, we, we never talk about this. This is stuff that's never talked about. Because you have a lot, a lot of people that are in fear of these things or they're, they're afraid of themselves. And they don't understand that they possess both. Yeah. 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 I, remember, I, remember, I remember hearing a voice say to me yesterday, it's not about you tapping into one energy more than the other. It's about both the energies at the same time. Because so, mm -hmm. I'm only lean more towards the light side, mm -hmm. more towards, you know, I'm always over here. I'm just going to stay over yeah. here, all the way over here. And whatever's going on over there, I see, but I don't see you. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not hearing it, <laughs> you know, but that took me a minute to come to terms with that, that acceptance of that. And, and, and part of it, I didn't even, part of it was subconscious. Part of it, I didn't even realize that's what I was doing. Mm hmm. You know what? I'm seeing this as like we reject. We reject pieces and aspects of ourselves mm -hmm. because we have mm -hmm. a flawed idea of what perfection actually is. Human condition to believe that perfection, you know, it looks a certain way. It's it's holy. You know, somebody mentioned the church. You see these figures and they were perfect and they and it's all BS. Nobody that has ever walked here or any path and claims to be an ascended master didn't experience every single emotion, every single aspect of self, but the ascension was actually accepting it as a, as a part of, of what perfection really is, which is like all of these aspects that we're talking about. So it's like we have to learn how to love all of us. And what really helps me with... Um, embracing the darkness so to speak so just to give everybody kind of like a little glimpse i have you have beings who are like very positively polarized and i would consider myself to be extremely positively polarized it's kind of like a part of my job here so really into the abraham hicks and the vortex and all the positive energies but then when i was getting initiated they're like hey you gotta master the shadow now and i was like I don't want to, like, I'm not into it, right? I'm not into the darkness. I don't want to deal with entities, none of that stuff. But what I had to realize is that darkness serves a very crucial role for the expansion of all that is. It's not that darkness is absolute truth, right? Love source is absolute truth because it's the acceptance of all. But the contrast, the darkness, the density is what allows us to have the experience of knowing that we are the light. Yes. That means that somebody has to be willing to play that role. Somebody has to be willing to sacrifice their consciousness to uh, descend down that low into frequency mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. play the role of darkness. So really, everything is always serving creation even the darkness and when you see that you're no longer in the illusion with them right you're just like okay recognize you're part of me for me to help me yes us all uh, yes expand. and you know what's funny I even, i've even said thank you when i've had certain encounters or certain <laughs> entities i said thank you for this experience because you taught me something and it looked at me like yeah that's powerful and then they got the hell on and didn't come back no more because I started really recognizing what that was. And, you know, these types of conversations, I was always careful. Yeah. Like, I would always be 
very careful about saying certain things because I didn't want people to start saying, oh, she's a devil worshiper. She's this, she's that. And I'm like, I just understand that the darkness does have a role and it plays a role. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's exactly what you said, to expand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to expand your consciousness one way or another. It's definitely exactly. going to do that. And that frequency of gratitude you just talked about, like, thank you, that's like an instantaneously, tr like, transmutation of that energy. And you'll even get to a point, guys, where you can start assisting some of these beings with their ascension. Like, that's what I do. Um, these beings who yes. have been in like we'll call them more demonic states for a very long time i will actually help them reascend into remembering what they really are yeah which is light temporarily yep. playing a role of darkness yes that is correct yes <laughs> so now you you are invincible and nothing is a threat nothing is outside of you and you're not fighting against anything. I think like this whole conversation on spiritual warfare was not to like have you put on the armor and go to battle. It's actually about recognizing that that battle is only happening within yes. yourself all the time. You versus your own you. consciousness as source. You versus you. It's always been that way. <laughs> it's always been that way. And if you're not consciously aware of that's what's going on, then you're gonna then you're gonna start falling into the other track. It's always been you versus versus you. And, and I want to talk about um, like lower vibrational spirits frequencies, like with this spiritual warfare, their whole job and goal is to actually keep you in a frequency of hate. So what I see a lot of people doing, it's like, okay, I hate the government mm -hmm. or I hate this group of people or I hate this thing happening on the planet. And you feel like you're being righteous, right? But in actuality, you are operating in a frequency of hate, yep. which is actually fuel for the separation game. You would actually need to alchemize everything that's happening on this planet through mm -hmm. entering a, uh, a state of love, acceptance, mm -hmm. and gratitude for everything that has transpired. That's actually how we're going to clean up a lot of these old... Uh, imbalanced ancestral templates the anger from your ancestors if you are perpetuating that and you are operating in hate you are creating she's giving y'all the keys y'all so make keys. sure you guys are listening very carefully she's definitely giving y'all the keys you're absolutely correct can you expand on that a little bit i created a program like ancestral called the ancestral elevation program and what this program does is, is that it's like a, a, a three to four hour program. Sometimes it can go longer than that, depending on the ancestors. And basically what we do is we go in and we get we, with source and we begin to start clearing out the karma between the person and the, their living relatives, and then go in and start clearing out the curses and the karma between that individual and then that person's ancestors on both the mother and the father's side to go all the way back to the cosmos, okay? Um, that is one powerful um, program. I've mm -hmm. seen people's mm -hmm. lives really change overnight by actually going through that process. And then you also, dancers also have the ability to rewrite their stories about what they experienced. So now because they were able to rewrite their stories yes. as far as what happened and what took place, now the offspring no longer has to worry about dealing with the karma, the curses, and the traumas and all the things that the ancestors and and the anger and the anger and the hatred all those things are healed during yeah. that process and you're mm -hmm. going to feel that internally you're going to feel internally that change with inside of you not, not only do you not only do you elevate your ancestors but but their ancestors turn around and they begin to start elevating you because they do live within you so that is a form of al alchemy that was created yes. as a program I created um, to transmute all that energy from the bloodline so that you will be able to live a more meaningful life. Your ancestors will also be able to be healed and also transcend because 
one of the things I learned about this program is that it teaches the ancestors too. It teaches the ancestors. Pretty much a lot of my programs yes. I've created, what I've been noticing, like some of my relatives that's passed on are saying things like, yeah, we pulled down our Akashic Records, fam. We started looking at our stuff. And now we get ready to do our stuff now. And I'm like, are y'all serious? <laughs> they said, like, yeah. And some of them did that. And now they're, some, of, some of my ancestors were angels. And they transformed and went back to the angelic realm. Some of them were different beings. And they, trans, they transitioned and went someplace else. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it was just really nice to have that experience and have that understanding that you actually teach your ancestors. You actually teach them how to elevate, how to transcend how to alchemize. You actually teach them. They see everything that you're doing. And then they turn around and they start helping their other relatives and teaching them those things in the bloodline. Mm. Yeah, so powerful. And um, someone, Frequency 13, had a really good comment I wanted to highlight about using zero point energy which is present moment present moment energy to essentially heal your now reality and incarnation because a lot of us carry so much anger and pain that's it's not coming from us right it's coming from our lineage it's coming from the trauma that's actually um coded within mm -hmm. the dna sequence and then that brings our entire vibration down and we have to learn how to recognize that whatever beings were co-creating here before we got here has nothing to do with us we get to alchemize the energy of whatever they created but i find that oftentimes we are so fixated on the past the past this is what happened and it doesn't invalidate yes. these experiences right a lot of uh, atrocities have taken place on every mm -hmm. single continent amongst all mm -hmm. every and all group uh, groups of races and ethnicities right um but if we are perpetuating the pain of our ancestors what we're actually doing i'm seeing this right now is we're creating a time loop where we're recycling through the same energy the same dynamics and the same experiences which is a dark yes, it is. black magician spell i'm seeing that come up right now um giving people to perpetuate that pain so that us as the collective Collective and that's the cycle are program. bound to re-experiencing yes. the same thing. It's like, if you really think about this, yes. Why are we having the same conversations from two or three years ago? Why are we having the same ago? conversation from really 60 years ago? make any sense. Let's, let's bring it up a little closer. Just, you know, just so, <laughs> just so you know, that the current generation is currently on this phone right now. Why are we still having these conversations? Because that's what I see. I see it over social media. I see it in different places. I hear it in conversation. And I've been really sitting back thinking about that, like, damn, we continue to keep perpetuating this cycle. But we don't, don't know why we're doing this. Yeah. And it's something that I definitely want to participate in assisting people in helping break it once and for, once and for all. It needs to be completely broken. And it is a spell. You're absolutely correct. Just like racism is a spell. It's definitely a spell. We have different types of spells that are being placed. But, but in particular, I want to say this, even with our people. You know, um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and I said, is it me, or does it seem like our people are the progenitors now of so much negativity because we carry so much pain and so much hurt? And I know a lot of that runs mm -hmm. through the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, mm -hmm. we're, we're dealing with, we're dealing with past yes. life karma yes. from choices and decisions that our ancestors made a long time ago. Plus, we're having to deal with what we're dealing with just living here in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there has to be the willingness to forgive across all timelines, spaces, and dimensions. Now, I'm gonna recircle this back. This is like a perfect bridge. We were just talking about accepting all aspects of self. And I'm gonna apply this to the ancestral topic. If everything that your ancestors experienced and whatever, whatever was experienced here was all happening 
Meaning within source, aka yourself, meaning it, it mm -hmm. was all yourself, mm -hmm. whichever side of it you think you were on or not, that would yes. mean you would have to accept all aspects of self. That means you would have to accept the fact that um, you would have to accept your oppressor. You would have to see the shadow reflection of, a re of what you would perceive to be an oppressor. Right, so there's so many multi-dimensional layers of this ancestral pain that we're mm -hmm. only going to neutralize through love, unconditional love, and forgiveness. And it's and, and that's the part getting getting to that, that point, place getting here. the people to get to that point where they're willing to forgive. Yes, absolutely. Um, someone is saying here: some people are forever going to be jealous of others. And I know there's this conversation around jealousy between races and that I'm kind of seeing this akashically. Um, that has been a back and forth thing, but I want to shift everybody into really becoming a gatekeeper and a holder of the light. And what this means is no matter what level of consciousness someone else is, is experiencing and vibrating in, when you recognize that whatever they're thinking, doing, or believing is from a lower plane of, of being, essentially, uh, you are no longer the victim. And so I kind of want to just use this as an opportunity to also clear a collective spell on anyone who's watching this. I'm just going to say it, this term white supremacy is a spell, right? When you're saying, um, and speaking through this lens, because there are a lot of people of color here, um, when you're using this word supremacy, you are affirming that something Boom. or someone outside Boom. of you is holding superiority over you. Okay? okay, that is a dark black magic spell that collectively everyone yes. needs to buy into uh, perpetuating and even talking about it. So, yes, the jealousy the non-jealousy the this the, okay these are lower dimensional conversations that just bind you to timelines wherein your energy can be siphoned because yes. you are not operating yes. in light love unity consciousness these, these these conversations are really implanted encoded within your consciousness but your true codex your true uh, source blueprint that wouldn't even be a, a part of your awareness. You would simply recognize, oh, this is a being who's experiencing a lower level of consciousness. That's it. Not supreme over me. When you start saying things like supreme, okay, now mm -hmm. you've collapsed yourself mm -hmm. into powerlessness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holding nothing back today it's well we said we was gonna go in today that's what we, we talked about that before we got on this live we're <laughs> we gonna we're gonna lay the cards on the table because this needs right? to be said we're it needs to be heard in. but i we're love the in. energy the energy is so loving and so and so light i think that anybody yeah. could listen to this and receive the message and i love that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely and um you know, if you find that you have aspects of self that are still holding on to anger, it's okay. You can honor those parts of yourself that just haven't processed things through a higher perspective. So um, you can practice. Beat your pain, pillows up, go, go to the gym, go to the boxing the gym. Lungs. Lay, you can. lay out that bean bag, <laughs> although that bean bag might lay you out, but lay out the bean bag, you know. Get into some get into some boxing, <laughs> spar with someone if you need to. Yes, exactly. Go to a rage to room and take a bunch of glasses and dishes and anything else that you can find and smash it to smithereens if you want. <laughs> yeah, been there, done that, done it all, honey. Did it all. It took me a year. It took me a <laughs> year to come out of anger from an experience I had back in 2021. It literally took me a year to come out of that because I just wasn't ready to forgive anyone. I just wasn't there because of how how much it hurt me, how how deeply it hurt me. And I would go yeah. to the shadow work part, and I would get to that part about the anger, and I couldn't leave that part. It was like I would take the book and throw it across the wall somewhere. I'm gonna get back to it, then. I ain't ready. I'm not ready yet. I'm a, I'm hold I'm hold on to it for a minute, you know. And then it it took yeah. it took uh, a lot of work. I was working with the shamans, going to the mountains, 
working with the fire gods, working with the water deities, you know, mm -hmm. releasing and purging and all kinds of things was going on, taking plant medicines, meditation, you know, practicing forgiveness. And then to a point to where I started, I, it started leaving me, where I was like, okay, this hasn't even served me anymore as far as where I'm going now. This ain't even serving me. But it was a situation where it happened mm -hmm. during a time period when my brother passed. I wasn't even able to grieve him because I was being attacked heavily when he passed by people that I thought cared about me that was supposed to be my friends that knew yeah. what happened. So I was like, okay, she's down now. We can go after her and we can get her, mm -hmm. you know? And you don't even realize these people are feeling ill about you. And so I wasn't even able to grieve his death until like mm -hmm. a year later. Because, and it wasn't until I released the anger. And then once I released the anger, then I was able to grieve his death. I was able to grieve for him. But it took a minute. And it's, it's so important what you're sharing because in this hyper healing space, people feel like they have to force themselves to get over things that they're not ready to get over yet. And it's actually more powerful to be intentionally allowing yourself to feel something for as long as you need to because um everything that's coming up to the surface right now for people it's unprocessed pain and trauma meaning you didn't fully sit with that emotion you didn't fully honor that part of you that emotion you didn't you didn't really allow it to process and, and have its natural cycle and way of healing um and so we all need to start practicing this self safety this is what i like to call creating safety within yourself to feel and experience whatever whatever you need to feel and experience for as long as you need to without this like inner critic judgment that's like hey you need to hurry up and uh -huh. heal this because what because you're trying to be perfect based on some um, standards in the fake digital spiritual community sorry about that i got a call and i had to answer that all the time <laughs> Okay, that last part that you said, could you repeat that oh, little no, piece fine, that you said fine. real quick that I missed uh, it? Allowing ourselves to experience every single emotion and not trying to rush through them based on standards set by fake spiritual digital standards of what yeah, it means agree. to be healed and or positive or something. I literally, I, I remember having a conversation with the cosmic mothers about this. They said, do things just have to play it? Just let it play itself out, child. That's what they would say. Let it play itself, let it play itself out. Because I was like, should I even be still doing this? Just let it play itself out. You're going to be all right. Let it play itself out. And so um, that's exactly what I did, you know, and I, I was I was very clear about that. When people would come to me and say, well, why are you still carrying it? I'm going to, to forgive when I'm ready to forgive if and, if and when I decide to forgive. And I don't know when that's going to be. It's something I got to process whenever I get around to processing, you know, and that was just something that I needed to go through for myself. I, it took me that long to process those emotions and those feelings because I got hit with a double whammy at once. You know, people don't realize, you know, you don't, you don't understand that the people don't understand when they say things like that. Everybody's going to respond to trauma in their own way. They're going to respond to those things in their own way. So it's very valid that if you decide that you're, you're angry and you're working working on trying to heal yourself it's okay if you throw your damn healing book across the room and you get to the part of anger it's okay you're going to throw it across the room a few times you're, you're going to do that you might even destroy the book and get another one it might happen like that but as long as as long as long as it doesn't consume you and that was something that i was cautiously aware of as long as it wasn't consuming me exactly. i decided to come to a place of just letting go that was my process it was like when i'm ready to let it go i'll let it go because i was looking for retribution i was looking for some type of i was looking for some type of recompense i was looking for something <laughs> you know i was like when are they gonna get theirs you wouldn't let me go to war with them but they shut me down they said like, you're not going to war you're not doing that it shut everything because girl I'm, I, I was like that i was like you go to war like, okay you want to go to war i'm going to the closet I'm going to the closet. I'm about to pull some shit out. We about to do this thing, right? 
Because I couldn't, I was so offended that they even tried right. me like that. I was right. so hot. Right. But they were like, but at the end of the day, nothing touched you. Mm-hmm. And I had to think about that for a minute. Because for me, I'm, I'm, I was in my ego. It was the audacity of it. It was just the audacity of the disrespect for me. The audacity. Do you even know who it is that you're right, moving against right, right now? Right. That's how I felt. So it was like, especially when I showed you love and kindness, I put my life on, on the line to help save your life when people are out here trying to take you right on up out of here in the whole nine. I just got that, that payback, which is like it wasn't, the math wasn't mathing. So when I, when I felt that, it was more so about the disrespect, you know, but then I had to also come to terms, because I'm very big on respect. Yeah. Like, I'm really big on that. The violation. Um, but at the same time, you know, I had to, I had to come to a place, come to a place of real honesty. And they was like, but did they, but did they, did they touch you though? I was like, no, nah, they, they did, they didn't do it. They, I was protected from it. Yeah, but it's just a point. It's just the principle of the matter. For me, it was the principle. So it was, it was, it was, it was very hard for me to, um, to come out of that within the first nine months of that. But I share this experience because I want people to know that I'm human, just like you're human, and your healing is your healing process. And don't listen to people outside of you when it comes to this. You got to go through your own process, and you got to process things the way that you know how to process things, and however long that's going to take. But be kind and gentle with yourself, and don't put yourself on a time on somebody else's timeline. So important like this is these are self-honor codes it's like when you really honor yourself you're not conditional with yourself you grant yourself the space and the grace to to navigate these experiences as needed something really magical happened for me when source broke something down (laughs) and they said listen we desire and seek to experience all of us all of uh, the possibility and potentiality the full scope and depth of who and what we are. That yep. includes both, both positive and negative frequencies, yep. the full frequency spectrum of what's available. So if you have what humans call a negative emotion come up and you try to reject it and resist it, you are resisting a part, an aspect of yourself within creation, and it will actually perpetuate. If you accept it as, oh, I am consciousness experiencing myself as being pissed off right now. Okay. It's just an experience. Now it's like you can, it's so weird. It's like you can even start to find gratitude for what were once lower emotions. Like um, I've been having random sadness come up and I'm like not a sad person at all. So if it does come up, it's like instantaneously like noticeable to me. But what I've been doing is actually leaning into it, right? Allowing myself to go, what if I just play in the experience of just feeling this emotion and giving my consciousness the opportunity to experience this emotion? Then what Mm -hmm. happens is it starts transmuting into bliss because now I'm perceiving it the way that source perceives it. I'm not perceiving it the way that ah. my ego perceives it, which creates uh, suffering. When these emotions come up, lean into them as, okay, this is a part of the journey. What, does, what, is this, what is this emotion? What does it feel like to experience this? Now it's like you are the, I'm hearing, ultimate experimenter within consciousness, and nothing can really, yes. you know. Um, yes, absolutely, Aaron, so absolutely. Speak. You are not your experience. That's something I had to come, that's, what, that's something I had to come to terms with, like I am not my experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. We're separate, we're separate yeah. from the, thoughts really that we we can witness them and even the emotions we can observe them and then we get to decide if Boom. we amplify them or if we neutralize Boom. them. Boom. <laughs> these people are really loving this live. I'm looking at these comments. They are very, very pleased about this live. I know. So beautiful. Such a beautiful community. So I want to shift gears a little bit because you and I have been behind the scenes talking a lot about the divine mother and the divine feminine ascension happening here on the planet at this time. 
What oh my does God. divine God, mother you code serious? can you, you, you go first? Because I know I see the Sophia Souls <laughs> playing all out through this thing. Oh, I gotta go first. Okay, let me tap into the divine mother right now. Um, she was actually preparing me for this conversation, like really just like expanding this love frequency. Um, she's coming in really like playful and beautiful, and she's going all of myself as this true, true creatrix all that is give me one second Aaron. yeah give me, give me one second i'm gonna text it to you i'm gonna text okay, it not a problem I don't, i'm gonna text uh, it to you okay if you have to be sorry about that i'm back i'm back Good. Okay, we're good. We're good. So Divine Mother is coming in and um, she's loving this conversation today. And what we were just talking about was like emotional alchemy because she's like, I love all of myself. I love all of you. I love all of the versions of you. I love everything that you've been in the past, in the present, in the future. All of them are just emanations of my divine love for myself. She wants to explain what divine love actually is. Mm -hmm. Creation is love. Everything that is happening, that is being birthed, that is being realized, that is being experienced, it's actually coming from her love for herself. And of course, Divine Father is here as well. Their love for creation itself is the fuel and the driving force uh, behind everything, behind all experiences. So this is why it is impossible for them to reject any aspect of you, any aspect of the person that you think should be different, she's saying, um, all of it. We love all of it because it's all a part of us. It's what we came for. It's it's why this is all happening. They're like, we were just bored. I've and heard, so and I've we heard you know what's so funny about you saying this? So that's I've like heard them say this to me before. I know that you're hearing that. Yes. I've heard this before. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People are crying. Angry. And um, the way I know it's so beautiful. Uh, the way the Divine Mother works with me in terms of increasing my self-love is she allows me to feel the love that she has for me and so i have a practice for everybody that works really well talk about yourself in third person meaning like if if you were someone else talking about you and you were saying i really love this about this person and i really love this you know all these different things do that as if it's in third person but do it about yourself and that instantaneously syncs you with how source feels about you i really love her insert thing i really love the way he does insert thing now you're getting a glimpse into how god source creator feels about you unconditionally then what starts to happen she's saying is that the things that you love about yourself become dominant as opposed to all of the matrix programming that says you're bad, you're wrong, you're not good enough, you need to do this, you need to change this, you're not doing this fast enough, this should have happened. We we have to start seeing That's ourselves a serious the divine, just the right divine there. lens of source. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. That was a serious that was a serious show you just dropped right there. <laughs> and I, and you know my a lot of my um a lot of my followers you know, I always tell them, I said, listen, I'm a teacher, but I'm also a student. I'm a student first. All the time, a student. But what you All just said is very powerful. That's very powerful. And I feel like the people that are currently listening to this live tonight that's meant to hear this live, I feel like it's going to change people after tonight. I feel like this is a whole activation that's taking place right now. That's what my spirit's saying is activation. This is an entire activation that's happening right now. Mm -hmm, mm 
Mm. Yeah. It's like if you were magnetized to the frequency of these transmissions and codes in this conversation, it's because you, this blueprint is already inside of you. We're just unlocking it. So then you take that medicine into the world, into your community, into your relationship. So you become a walking activation when people are interacting yes. with you. They're interacting yes. with the frequency. And of sometimes love. you might even get tingly. There was a sister I met down in Panama one day that tripped me out. And we met and we were talking. And I was like, what the hell? I started looking at my arms. I said, what is goosebumps? What the hell is going on right now? And then she said, yeah, I feel it too. I don't, I don't know what's going on. But it's like this. I felt like there was, there was, we were passing on some codes. Usually when I get key codes that hit my first eye, I can feel the pressure in my, my first eye. Um, but also I, I felt the energy and, I, and I'm like, damn, I just mm -hmm. met you. Like I literally just met you. Like we ran into each other at the airport. But now me and our sister, we cool now. She's actually <laughs> one of the people I'm gonna go support for her event that she's doing in Panama this weekend. So I'm gonna speak at her, I'm gonna be speaking at her event. But um, that was one of situations where you're literally a walking activation and you come into somebody's presence if you get activated literally just like you said so how can people create their own connection with source or their own higher self or this love that we're talking about how can people really you they know, first have to come to the self-realization that it's not something life. that's separate of them. They need to know that they are a source. Mm. There's that yes. there's that part. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, yes, a lot yes. of people yes. humanize source. And I tell people all the time that like, you can't humanize source. You can't do that. <laughs> um <laughs> they humanize a why would source? I mean, that is so true. And this, and I'm like, you do realize that everything is so everything, the dark and the light and the in-between and all of the creation is source. It's not, you are source. We are source on the collective level. We are source individually. I tell people the only difference is that source gives us enough individual space for us to be our own unique selves. But at the end of the day, we're source. Yeah. You know, that was, I think you said that perfectly. It's not trying to obtain a realization and it's more, more so about recognizing what is already here, what is already you. You don't have to try yes. to be loved by source. Yes. You already are. Yes. You don't, you earn, are you don't love. earn love, you know? Like, it's not something that's external love is not of you. Something it's not external. Earn. You know, it's something that it's just there. It's just like, and something really cool happens when you're like, source is just going to always love me. Like I can do anything right now. Source is just going to love me. There's something so freeing about that, that then allows you to love yourself within any and all conditions and circumstances. Because the matrix is Absolutely. full is to and by putting you from those loving yourself. false illusions that you have about yourself to the forefront. And it isn't real. It's not real. Correct. And I guess one of the last things I guess I want to share about since we're kind of talking talking about the divine feminine, I've been having these uh, like these realizations drop in around how feminine energy has been suppressed within all beings on this planet. It doesn't matter if you're being expressed as a man or a woman right now in this current incarnation, but how feminine energy in general has been suppressed is through um, attacking your ability to give and receive love to others and to Boom. yourself because Boom. the feminine superpower is love it, it's the ultimate reviewer it's the ultimate healer it, it transcends all so once they get you to to put that shell on and that armor and now you're hardened and now you're not uh freely giving and receiving love 
you are out of alignment with your organic uh, natural way of being. And so we have to find a way to get back to feeling safe within ourselves to freely. I agree. And, and also it's also about knowing the boundaries. Love. We got to understand what that actually means. I've heard people say, well, I operate from the heart space all the time. I go out of my way to help people. And all they do is, you know, poop on me and talk bad about me or they use me. And I'm like, but did you set up boundaries for yourself? <laughs> And then first, and then did you set up boundaries for the people that you're helping? Important. Loving yourself doesn't necessarily, loving mm -hmm. yourself could just be giving a mm -hmm. kind word to someone. Or love, yeah. having love or operating from the heart space could be something as simple as you just taking a time out to listen to someone, giving someone a kind word, doing little things that shows that you're mm -hmm. operating from the heart space, but it doesn't mean that you allow yourself to be ran into the ground and be used by other people people that's not what that means you mm -hmm. have to know when to, you got to know when to cut things short yeah. and also you have to recognize when your own cup is empty you you want to catch it before your cup even gets empty yes 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 yes, yes. you want to recognize when the energy is mm -hmm. not properly balanced mm -hmm. when it's not give and take you want to recognize that <clears throat> yeah yeah there's also a distortion on what people think love is. Love is not sacrifice. And many of us have been uh, conditioned to think that love is sacrifice because it's, oh, when I overly extend of myself to the point that it now becomes self-depletion, um, I'm doing so to then get love or the validation or the acceptance from someone or something out there. But now you've depleted yourself. Um, true self-love and love in general oh, is really about thanks. honoring yourself first even before you honor your reflection you would need to honor yourself first because this full cup you're talking about you don't, you have, don't have nothing a full cup you actually and, I mean, I'm, and i'm going to take it to here anyone else. honor thyself first even before thy children because if you don't have the energy and you don't have the things that you need to have to take care of your children mm. they can drain you as well I'm see. I'm going. I'm, I'm helping a young lady with that right now, or she's allowed herself to be depleted because her son is having some issues. He's tapped in, but he won't get out those realms, and so he's allowed some things to enter into his body. And in the process of that, that, now he's in his karma. So I'm like, well, you just removed me out the picture from helping you now because you didn't did the exact exact opposite of what we said for you not to do. So now I'm I got that source. And I had the angels tell me it's your karma. So now I got to move myself out the picture. And I had to tell mom, I said, I hate to tell you this. I said, but I need to let you know I got to pull out. <laughs> so told me to pull out because he, he didn't, he didn't jump out there and did that. So that's not me going against the grain on some, well, I just got to save mm -hmm. this boy. I just got to do this and do this. And now I'm putting myself and get myself caught up in that chaos. And now my energy's drained and my energy's depleted and that whole nine. And now I ain't got no energy like what they're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So I had, I, had, I, had, I had told you, you didn't listen. Okay, well, all right, then I'm going to holler back. Pull out quick, quick, quick fast. <laughs> you have to be careful. You have, you have to be very careful. You're, the, the, you got to examine and your you know need. What? People need to examine their need to want to help beyond them sustaining yeah. themselves. They have to examine what that is and where that comes from. Mm. <clears throat> and you have to be okay with allowing other people to have their lessons, right? Like what I've been seeing with some of the people that I'm working with right now is they want to save people from the things that they need to learn. Um, true love mm. is not a savior complex. True love is actually... Uh, you need to have your own self-realization. And the only way that you're going to have your own self-realization is through your own process. But uh, even like people are trying to stay in relationships with people because they don't want that person to be, you know, hurt or to go through the proper experience that their higher self is actually trying to use you as a catalyst, but you're trying to block them from experiencing pain and thus you're depleting yourself. It's like this energy shows up in so many ways that we practice self depletion because we're trying to stop other people from having their journey. 
everybody here was born alone. They're going to die alone. They're going to return back to source alone. You need to remove yourself out of whatever karmic yeah. contractual agreements that they have set up and uh, yeah. sustain your own energy. That is true love. That's, That's true something love. <laughs> that was something that was shown to me not too long ago when I had this individual and I had asked her, um, which actually is one of my higher aspects. I had asked her, I said, are you going to step in and intervene? Which she's like, no, no, that's just karma. <laughs> she told me when she said, when she told me she wasn't doing nothing. I said, yeah, I'm going to have to pull out. I'm going to have to pull out. So yeah, what you're saying is absolutely 100% correct. And it's funny because even as a priest, you know, a lot of people come to me for their problems and I literally say to them, okay, tell me what happened so I can assess what puts you in the situation in the first place because I'm not trying to get up caught up in your in your karma. Now we do what you call E5 reading or Aaron D. Lagoon. So the Arisha will tell me what's going on with that individual. When I get that full story um, about what's going on with that individual, the first thing I'm checking for is, is this karma? If they tell me it's karma, I tell them straight up, I'm, I can't do it. A lot mm -hmm. of priests don't mm -hmm. do that because they're money hungry and things like that. But I'm not with the creating karma for myself. I'm not, I'm not with that. So I just let them know, like, look, mm -hmm. this is what happened. You did this. Um, you're dealing in a cycle of karma for yourself right now. <laughs> and there are some lessons that you need to learn so you don't go through the process. Yeah hurt sometimes that made you taking some serious hell some losses and things like that but i guarantee you, you're never going to do this again but I, I would be intervening in your process i would be intervening in that you know when i was really younger when i didn't know any better my whole thing was oh i got to help them i feel so bad for them and then they turn around after you give them the help and do the exact same thing all over again as if you didn't help them in the first place so they don't even appreciate they don't even appreciate the help right. because they didn't learn the lesson. So they yes, have to yes, go through yes. the karmic lessons. They have to. Man, I've, I've I've experienced that in my healing practice as well. And then it's so funny, all the guys go, they're like, <laughs> see, you see why we tell you to mind your own vibration, stay out of people's business. Mind your own you vibration. Save everybody, right? And when I see these things, what, what I tell people is I say. I see this as a pending contractual lesson, okay? You didn't come to me because we were going to fix everything and solve everything. If anything, um, your higher self brought you here so you can get clear on what you should be learning, what you are learning right now. So as we're navigating these things, start asking yourself, well, what am I learning? What am I learning? Learning. Not, I'm trying to hurry up and cancel this contract. You know, people people joke and say that all the time. They're like, I just want to end this. I'm like, well, you can't. It's of your own creation. You you have to. You have to alchemize you it. Have absolutely. To master it, right? You have to. Yeah. Alchemize mind it. your own vibration. I like that one. I'm gonna start yeah, using right. that one, honey. Because I be like, mind the business, pay. Hey, mind your business. Hey, got nothing mind to do with me. Business. Mind your business. Yeah, Don't do even look in. <laughs> you be wanting to some of them bring up to bring up a subject. And I and you you'll be picking up on stuff. Well, I'm picking up, and I hear this. Mind your damn business. Oh, okay. Well, my my ass told me mind my damn business. So I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and just um shut them out. <laughs> they also have me doing this on social media. Like, be mindful, intentional with what you're engaging, interacting with, because. If you start engaging with a certain frequency of a post, what happens is you lower your vibration down to that post, the frequency of that post. And now you are in, in that field, in that space with those energies. So don't just be out here uh, carelessly in interacting with things. You got to be stingy with your vibration. Am I willing to drop my frequency down to whatever this is, yes or no? If the answer is no, like literally just keep scrolling. Like I'm not even trying to tap, you know, vortexually tap into whatever is happening in yeah. that timeline. Yeah. 
I'm staying yep, here. You're we're right. Vibration. You're right. We're good. Now, I was a here. queen arguing. I would get in. Someone would talk shit on my dad. I'd be going in on their ass. Like, who are you talking to? And I'd be going in on them <laughs> and whatnot. But then after a while, I just kind of got out of that because I was like, okay, I see what this is. So I had to come out of that because sometimes they'd be saying some of the craziest yeah. things to you and you're just like, I'm actually taking your advice and I'm not even reading the comments right. anymore. Trigger, like yeah. I might see like a first couple of comments and then I may respond to positive Man. things that are said, but as far as anything negative, I don't, I don't, they just get ignored. Um, but yeah, I was the queen of that. I was a queen of responding back to people, but what you're saying is absolutely correct because that's exactly what would happen. So I said, okay, I don't want to be bothered with this energy anymore. I'm going to leave it alone. So I got to. And that's a part of the spiritual warfare it's like yeah. choosing what's worth the energy and what's not now uh this archangel michael coming in um you know with his sword of truth and sometimes we do need to say things because the frequency of that truth gives someone an opportunity to access a new timeline a new path right so this is not necessarily about like uh never saying anything it's just about being consciously aware of what's worth it is there possibly an opportunity for this person to perceive a higher path so it does, does require me to perhaps call out some distortion in their field but then maybe you decide mm, i don't think they would they have the range to even have that conversation so then you consciously choose to conserve your energy big part of spiritual warfare is we have to say to something that's just like that situation i mean you discussed about up. that other situation and you was like you're like what happened with that and i was like that person tried to come back later on and say something crazy and i didn't even entertain it because i was i was able to recognize that that person didn't have the capacity to see the other perspective so at that point once so I recognize that, that that this is where you are and this is where you're locked yes. into it. It when yeah. it comes to the grander scheme of things, it, it it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect my life on any level. I'm going to continue to keep moving forward. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, seriously. Like like they look. I I started really assessing it in a whole different way, and you know I, I just got to be real about it. I'm like, okay, is this? Are you a factor? Right. You're not a factor. So what's the point of this? There's no point. It's not going to stop the mission. It's not going to stop anything that I have going on. I got to keep pushing because I don't have time for this. There's so many other things that are going on. And I spend the majority of my time assisting others and healing others, helping others heal. I spend a majority of my time in that space. So I don't have time for anything else, any other distortion. I like the word you use, distortion. Love that word. I don't have time for the energy. I don't have time for that distortion. So I just let people be where they're going to be. They don't need my energy. I don't need theirs. I can keep it pushing. It's a big planet out here honey <laughs> there are other people that i could be co-creating with yeah with because even when i address that individual i address them with love even in that <laughs> even, even in that i still address them with love hoping that they would see the other perspective but i realized that, that it just wasn't that so i'm like okay well we're operating mm -hmm. on two different frequencies here and that's okay. You're you're entitled to feel how you want to feel, and I'm entitled to exit stage left and keep right. it moving. And you know what? This is especially important with family. Ooh. I see people really struggling in family dynamics. With, um, maybe your family is on this frequency, and you want them to be up here with you. You got to get over the fact that they're, not they're right. probably not in this incarnation going to get up there with you. And stop trying to change them and uh, over-teach them, them and uh, fix them. Force really. them. Let them be where they Save are and you just hold them. them right. You, you can't change people who are who are not, you know, ready to perceive from higher awareness. Source always says the best way that we teach is through our example. It's not even words. Words in this time space reality are so limiting that's why we use light <laughs> we talk in light language it's just like raw cosmic frequency um words they don't really help they don't really do much because people have so many different perceptions and perspectives hold the light be the light exude Boom. this beautiful magnetic radiant energy and like stop trying to like battle with them and get them to understand it because boom it just lowers absolutely one thousand percent 
1,000%. Family and friends, you cannot change them or their journey. And Let me and tell you something. I didn't, that that is, hit uh, so hard for me right in 2020. Now, 2020 was actually a really good year for me because that was the year that I started blowing up. So I was traveling back back and forth to Mexico. I was making a lot of money in 2020. Um, and there was a lot of things, there was a lot of positive things that was going on for me in, that, in my life during that time period. I was one of those people that just knew um, that my family members, some of my, especially my immediate family members, I was like, oh, I ain't going to worry about them doing this, that, and the third. I know they ain't going to do it. I know they ain't going to do it. And when my sister told me that she went and got that, that, that thing, I don't want to say the word, but she got the thing. And her husband, and my oldest niece, and my mom, <laughs> my dad said he wasn't getting it. That really put things into perspective for me in such a way that it was very sobering. And I had to make a decision about how I was going to deal with them from that point on. And I remember going home to visit them because I haven't seen them in so long. So I went home to visit them. I was spending time with them. And I said, but I love my family, though. I love them so much. And spending time with them and just having mm -hmm. reminiscing on good times and things like that. One part of me was sad, but then another part of me was <laughs> like, well, they're still here, and I still love them. And so it was a very sobering moment for me, though, that was a lesson that was taught to me. And I wasn't even forced to know any of them. It was just more like, let me send you this information. So you're fully informed about what you're about to do before you do it. And I was just so sure that they wouldn't go that, that route. I don't know why I was so sure. But what it all boiled down to was, for my sister, it was, it was mainly fear. She was afraid. And um, I told her, I said, you got to be careful while mm -hmm. making decisions mm -hmm. under that energy because you're not able to think think from a rational perspective when you're operating out of fear. Oof. That just, yeah, that just really unlocked. Yeah, on that's, that was, that was the most, that was the, topic, and, you know, so. she has these large big screen TVs in her house and they got CNN running all, all throughout the day in the house and, you know, CNN's putting out all kinds of spells of fear in the, the worst case scenario, just all <laughs> kinds of things that they were putting out there. And a lot of that, and a lot of that stuff they was putting out there was propaganda, and some of that stuff was true. But they were mixing it, and so um, you know, I was telling her, I said, I don't, I don't know how you, how you're comfortable with that type of energy circulating through the house like that all throughout the day. I said, it makes sense to me is how, why you were afraid. Um, but that was a sober. That, that was my sobering yeah. defining moment. That you cannot alter or change the destiny of your family members. It cannot be done. And even though I wasn't forcing it on any of them, yes. I just had a conversation with them and let, let them know this is what it is. Here's some information. Y'all figure it out. Do what you feel like you, you, what you do what you need to do best, what you feel is best for you and your family. Um, and they, they went that route. Now, was I heartbroken? Of course I was heartbroken behind that. I was definitely heartbroken behind that because I knew that there was going to be some things that came with that. And there were some things on the spiritual level that I had to assist in them because there were certain things that were going on with them that was caused behind that. So I had to had to, had to go in and seal some things up and just all kinds of things that was going on with them at the time to help them. Um, but it, it, it was very sobering. It was like a defining moment for me. At that point, it was like, yo, there's no saving. There's no saving. There's no convincing. There's no none of that. Like, that doesn't exist. People are going to do what they want to do, and they have the choice of free will. Yeah. And this yes. is also, I'm hearing where yes. we learn unconditional love. It all goes back to unconditional love, which is, I allow every soul to walk their path. And really what Source wants to drop in right now is, Everyone is coming home no matter what. There will be a reconciliation between you and I, period. So when you know that, when you understand that, you allow beings to make whatever 
uh, choices and exp yeah. experiences yeah. they want to have, because you know we're all going home. Then that just cuts out all the distortion that the lower vibrations come in and they try to stir up. Everybody's going back to source, guys. Like source is like really, really like like imprinting this on a cellular level right now. Every single person is coming home because I know some of you are talking about if you did the thing and maybe you feel some shame or some guilt around that. Um, everybody, yeah, a whole other whole other conversation. But everybody's going home, so allow them to walk their path and operate in a frequency of unconditional love. Now, you might not understand why their higher self has primed and prepped them to make a certain decision and the repercussions of that decision that they actually need to experience the consequences of that decision so if you try to insert yourself and you try to uh alter their path from a place of like ignorance you don't really know what's going on yeah from a higher perspective it sure that can. can create it sure can is I'm, I'm telling you man that was a sobering like that was a very real sobering like smack me dead in my face like pow i'm like damn but then right after that was the unconditional love because when i spent time with them i mean it was like okay i love my family so that unconditional love kicked in i'm like well i love them regardless exactly. of what they went and did to themselves i'm cool mm -hmm. and i remember when she told me that at first and she was kind of exactly. waiting for me to say something when she first told me that and i, I mean it was just like i i Look on my face when she said that because I was in a state of shock when she told me, and it was just like, okay, well, I mean, you did what you felt you needed to do for your family. That's what you need to do, and that's what you need to do. And I think she thought I was going to alienate her or whatever she was thinking. I said, I'm not going to alienate you. You made your decision. I respect it, and I love you regardless. <laughs> I needed her to know, but still, I needed her to know that I was not going to not associate with her or talk to her or spend time with her or come see her because she went down that path. I was not going to do that. So I wanted my family to know that that wasn't going to happen. You know what I'm seeing right now? If us in the spiritual community become dogmatic in yeah. that way, we're doing yeah, you see that too. You, you, see that, you see that. You see that. You do see that. You do see that paradigm. Absolutely. You see that. Absolutely. Right? So sometimes, yep. the source is saying you got to come off your spiritual high horse. There is a such thing as spiritual ego. Um, you know what? Aaron, I'm going to be honest with you. That was one of the most humbling. That's really one of the most what? humbling experiences I've had. Coming down this journey, that was very humbling. I was like, let me go sit my ass down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I, I literally had to go sit down somewhere because, for one, there was just such a confidence <laughs> that was there. But I was like, I just knew they were going to do that. My dad was like, hell no, I ain't doing it. So I was like, okay, well, if you ain't doing it. Mom probably ain't going to do it. And if mom ain't doing it, then my sister probably ain't going to do it. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But then when she told me that, it was just like this state of shock. Right. And I'm like, Am I going? Am I going to? Am I going to act a fool, or am I still going to love my family unconditionally? So, <laughs> am I going to condemn? Am I yeah, it was like when it was a very like, real. Right? Listen, it was a <laughs> real, it was a real like slap you in your face moment. It was very humbling. I'm not going to sit up here in front. Very humbling. So then it, it kind wow. of put things into perspective for me because that that hit home. Like that's family. Like that's the fam, right? That's the fam. So it would definitely was one of those experiences that definitely that definitely just <laughs> after that it was right, right after that I was just like look fam people are gonna do what they're gonna do <laughs> you know what I'm saying people are gonna do what they people are gonna do what they gonna do don't be out here trying to save folk <laughs> don't be out here trying to save folk don't mess with their timelines don't mess with their destiny leave them alone so that was, that was a very serious that was a very serious lesson I had to learn from that very serious absolutely hold the light be the light allow people to walk their path and it's really interesting at the right time you'll find that a lot of these people will, will recircle back in a way 
where now they do have questions yeah. or they're interested or they are having an awakening at this point. It's like, you don't have to control things. Just if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen for them. And yeah. you'll be the person who can give them yeah. guidance and, and activate them. Yeah. And it has came back around and it has came back around. Funny you said that it has came back yeah. around. So, yeah. I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you. I wish I could say what I would like to say on here, but I can't. <laughs> but let's just say, let's just say, me and Source worked out a remedy for that situation, and a program was created, and that's all I'm gonna say. So it was, it was something came to me. I was like, Source, you just dropped this in my head, did? You? Yep. And I started, I started like, okay, I'm gonna put this together, put this program. And I was back, bouncing back and forth with Source about this, that, and the third. And then, it, and then the program was birthed. So, yeah, there, there's something that was given to me to, to, to assist. So that was, the, that was the full circle. That was the, the full circle for me, mm -hmm. the full circle. I was like, damn, this is crazy. So, yeah. So we have one more thing we want to share on this side. And <clears throat> Source is saying if there's anything you, we would prefer you to take away from this conversation, it would be that nothing wrong is happening here. Nothing out of yeah. control is happening here. You always had the power to create and activate whatever yes. realities and timelines you prefer. So knowing <laughs> that, go have fun. <laughs> All they care about is us having fun. They're like, go create some things that have never been created before. And mind your own, your own vibration. They'll get caught up in these lower dimensional uh, conversations. And this is yeah. how we get the collective yes. to shift into these 5D frequencies. Go have fun. Go spread love. Nothing wrong. Nothing bad is yes, happening. Yes, it is. And, and it is about having fun. Even when we're thing. doing certain things, <laughs> such as like mission, let's say mission-oriented projects, one of the things they always say is that you're going to have fun in the process. It's not going to be all serious. It's not going to be all just a mission. No, yes. they like want us to have fun, laugh, joke, <laughs> you know, go with the flow of things. Like, don't be so structured. Just let things come about at its own natural pace, and then you'll see how things unfold. Yes, yes. And trust the process. That's another thing. Trust the process. Trust. And that's a major piece. But I'm going to tell you something, Aaron. I've been having some powerful experiences <laughs> just off of that alone, just off, just off trust, just the trusting to me. Like we had, we had an experience mm -hmm. when we went to, mm -hmm. um, we went to this place in the mountains out here. And we had, I had rented out this cabin through the Airbnb. We were interfacing with nature for like two weeks. We had some work we had to do, right? And I was setting up, we were setting up grids, crystal grids. And my son was like, we're going to leave these grids set up while we go ahead and go into the city. We're going to go to the ocean. We're going to swim, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, nah, we can't do that, fam. What if they come up with somebody? Might come up on a property and mess with the grids. That's some beautiful crystals, some beautiful crystal grids. And he's like, Mom, ain't nothing gonna happen, ain't nothing gonna happen. So I was like, Okay, I'm gonna trust this process. I'm just gonna trust the process. Do you know when we got back, there was this dog that was there that was guarding the grid. And the dog I was even giving us a look like, oh my God. can I go? Oh, Y'all good? good? Y'all everything there? Everything straight? This is the way the dog was acting. Y'all good? Okay, cool. You straight? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and go now. And I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what the hell? But the dog was there guarding the crystal grids. That was amazing. That is amazing. I, I can only imagine what that felt like to have that experience and then it starts it really yeah in and it's like yes that source always got me in every yes that way, hit me very very hard i was aspects. like damn damn this is crazy 
So I've gotten definitely comfortable in that space of the trust. The trust. Mm -hmm. Perfect. To seal it up on spiritual warfare. You are already protected through your connection with source. And when you know that, everything else is just background noise. And yeah. You can just be free, be happy, yeah. be in love. That, that's what I've been life. learning in terms of that. That experience really opened up my eyes. That really did. I was like, <laughs> damn, that really opened up my eyes. I, I see that it. dog there like that. And the way it's just and the way the dog was acting was tripping me out. I was like, is this dog? What are you saying? Are y'all good? Is everything over? It's like the dog's like, is everything over? Is everything accounted for? I'm like, that was tripping me out. <laughs> you know what I'm hearing them say right now? They're like, uh, even before you have asked, it has been given. I appreciate it. Gratitude. And that's just peace, you know, infinite peace arises. Like, source can already see what I need. So let me just chill a little Boom. Bit and be supported Boom. and protected and provided Boom. unconditionally. <laughs> and coming into that space of distrusting, of distrusting the source on that level, yes, that just yes, opens yes. up so many different doors, man. That just opens up so many different things man. on such a different level. And you realize that the boogeyman is not to get you anymore. And really, you were the boogeyman anyway. Your shadow, your shadow self was really the boogeyman. <laughs> You know, I remember when I had my, um, I was telling you about this the other day, my return to omnipresence and this reunion with source. And one of the first things that unlocked in my consciousness was I said, there are no problems. There were never any problems. There will never be any problems. Problems are illusions because the, the solution was already there. It, whatever you need, it's like source has instantaneously calculated, figured out um, how to remedy this situation or to, to get you the resources or the information that you need. It's like none of us have any problems. And when you release your attachment to what you were per, what you're perceiving as a problem, you actually create this energetic space for and the key word you said: releasing the attachment. In. That's key. Because when you're attached to that, you don't open, you don't leave room for anything else to come in. You don't leave room for the actual solution to come in because you're too busy being attached and putting your focus on the actual problem and you're not giving up the space. You're not releasing the space for some for that Mm -hmm. solution to come forward. So you gotta be mindful of the attachment. That's real talk. That's real talk. Yeah, because this whole matrix experience, it's like, I want everybody to really tune into this. You recognize how maybe there are times in your life where you experience peace, but then subconsciously you're like, okay, things are too good, right? Things are too going too well. And then you will subconsciously go seek out chaos because problems hold a, a certain addiction frequency. And the human mind can become obsessed with continuously trying to figure out or solve the next problem. True surrender is when we are comfortable with there being no problem. Recognize where you keep looking for problems and unconsciously creating them. Because for source, there are no problems. There are only solutions that are immediately available as soon as you need them. So you are creating the problem. So you are the problem. You're creating it. It doesn't really yep, exist. Yeah, every it, single you time. You got to be light, loose and flowing. With your experiences, you got to be loose and flowing. <laughs> but you do, though. <laughs> but you do. You have to be loose and flowing. You and can't then, be attaching yourself people, to things. You do. And, and the people around you, the people around you will think that you're crazy. Like for a long time, I remember <laughs> you uh, my this. parents set me down one day. And they were like, you know, I think I was like 19 or something like that. And they go, you just 
think you can think things and they're gonna happen, right? Cause I'm, I'm like, I'm walking on air, like everything's so light, I'm so positive, right? You have these people who are like so like locked into the 3D grid. They're like, you just really think things are just gonna happen. And let yeah. me tell you, every single thing that I told them that I was gonna do, I did. Facts, every single thing, every single thing. So uh, it doesn't matter what the people around you yeah. think, right? They're operating in a lower level of awareness. You get to show yeah. them um, what's actually possible, yes. available here. <laughs> and that's yes. the that you did. My, my daughter used to say the same thing. She said, mom, you can't think your <laughs> way to success. I said, you want to bet? Do you want to bet? I'm going to show you right. better than I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, she used to trip off of that. Mm -hmm. And I literally put myself, I literally had opportunities and a lot of doors <laughs> opened up for me, for me to be around people that the average person could never get around. You know, literally, I literally manifested certain experiences yeah. to meet certain types of people operating on certain levels. And I tell you, I tell you one thing, you know, um, yes. billionaires get a bad rep, right? Because we usually associate them <laughs> with controllers of the planet. They have nefarious plans and all kinds of stuff. But I've actually had the opportunity to meet several billionaires and be in, in their circle. And I said to myself, now, you know damn well, you ain't got no business being here. But then I said to myself, why not? Why not? Yes. And one of the things yes. that I observed yes. about yes. them, they yes. had people yes. around them that had Absolutely. different inventions, all different types of creator, people that were very creative, coming up with new technology and zero point energy and all these different mad, like mad beds and, and all kinds of stuff that they were introducing, like this technology or the blueprints for the technology and all that type of stuff, right? And I literally manifested a flight yeah. there to California. I was living in Atlanta at the time for free i manifested a hotel stay for free i manifested meeting these people there's no way in the hell the average person would say there's no way in the hell that should have even have happened it happened the whole whole experience happened and i've done this so many times where i've literally manifested when i set my mind on something and i get into that manifestation mode it literally just starts happening literally starts happening and i what i learned mm -hmm. being in those spaces mm -hmm. is that at least the ones i met because there's some that people don't know anything about they don't never heard of them they're not famous none of that kind of stuff they're just behind the scenes right those are some of the most spiritual people that you'll ever meet sure. some of the most spiritual people that you'll ever meet and not necessarily on the negative side not you know on the nefarious side either um yeah. There are forces out here and there are people out here that are doing good work for the planet that are also billionaires. You just don't see that side ever talked about or ever, ever publicized. You always see the other side, you know, the, the darkness, the witchcraft, the black magic, the bloodlust and all that. You always see that sacrificing and all that kind of stuff. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And something's coming through another spell is coming up for <laughs> illumination that's being cleared for some folks right now when people get, get you to hate wealth and people who have money what do you think that does to your own uh vibration that means now you repel that energy of wealth and money and prosperity um from coming to you so it's actually been a dark magic spell to demonize money and people with money now it doesn't mean that there aren't bad people who have money and uh, but there are there are bad people who have money there are good people who have money money itself is neutral what people choose to do with their money or right. what they choose to do for money is based on their own ego right but what's been taking place is subconsciously getting people to hate money so they can never attract it and then that keeps you in a mode of survival so we're so just aligned because this is why source sent me to wall street and i had to crack the whole wealth code and the whole prosperity yeah. code to recognize what was actually happening energetically vibrationally as it pertains to money success and wealth interacting with billionaires you know what happens when you 
you interact with billionaires and people on that frequency, they imprint that energy that they have onto you. But if you're conditioned to believe that they're bad, nefarious, evil, you block out those people from even coming into your field, activating correct. you, and then elevating you to that to that grid, right? The only only way that I elevated to a wealth grid is because I had to spend a lot of time around people who had a lot of money, and then subconsciously, every everything started uh, reprogramming. I started thinking about money differently. So really, get clear on the story that you're telling yourself. Exactly. About, um, and I'm a firm believer of creating your own heaven on this earth. I'm a firm believer in that. And that means that I'm not going to be out here struggling. I'm not going to be out here trying to figure out where I'm going to get my next meal from. I'm not going to be out here trying to figure out how I'm going to pay my mortgage note. I'm not going to be out here without a vehicle. I'm not going to be out here. I'm not just. I'm not going to be out. I need to be comfortable. Source knows I like to be comfortable. I have to be comfortable, <laughs> and I like luxury. Okay. Oh I have to have certain requirements that I have to have like, in order for me to be time. comfortable. For me to do the work that the Most High Source wants us to do, I need to be in a comfortable space. It is what it is. I must be comfortable. So, you know, people are oh, arguing. I'm like, well, if you would spend more time focusing on self and manifesting for yourself, you wouldn't be worried about what I'm doing over here. You wouldn't even be concerned about people that are in that space are not concerned about those who don't have it in that way. We're not. We're not concerned about that frequency. We're not concerned like that. It's the truth. We are we are in a space where we're constantly creating. So we're not even thinking about looking back on the past or you know going going back to a place that we came from. We're not looking in that space. We're looking to continue to create and continue to keep manifesting. I know for me, I'm creating and manifesting on a regular basis. So I'm not looking at any other aspect. Yes. So yeah, uh, two Leo queens here. So we actually discovered the other day that our birthdays yes. are a day Can apart. Can y'all believe the that? Isn't that and crazy? Of August. Yeah. So lots of Leo queen energy. You know, I told them straight up, I'm not gonna be here um, and not have my needs met. Like it all has. To, if I'm gonna be here transmuting the shit that I'm transmuting in this ancestral lineage and with all of this going on with all types of things like I'm just keeping it I'm just keeping it but okay. I'm just keeping it me, and I saw I'm, I'm going to say this one thing too I when you are on your path when you are directly aligned on your path and your purpose of what you came here for that won't even be a factor anymore like not having and lack won't even be a factor anymore the things that you need to receive is automatically going to be provided for you without a second thought. Mm -hmm. I want to pull, I want to use this as an opportunity to pull some folks out of the money matrix. So in one of my private trainings last week, um, the higher councils were teaching everybody about how to ask your spiritual team for more money. And I want to share this exercise and this practice with everybody. You know, if you were going to ask an investor for money, you would have a business proposal. So something that you can do is look at the life that you've lived here. You write down all of the things that you've been up to. What have you done for this planet? And it could simply be the things you've been working on within self. Uh, this is how much money I need per month. This is how I need to live and why this is what the money is going to be for this is everything that i've done mm -hmm. hey spiritual team mm -hmm. it's time for an increase i've done a lot of work down here this is what we call commissioning your team for more money well wow. literally ask your spiritual thank you team very much money. girl so I, just I appreciate it I remember I was doing my proposal. I said, okay, I like this little thing. I said, 
I need to do this, this, and this. And then overall, I was like, work-life balance. Is, okay. Correct. And that money will flow to you. Work-life balance. That money will flow to you. It, it'll just flow without a... I don't know one time, Aaron. I, 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 I think I might, might have told two people this. I remember at one point, I was, I was manifesting so much money. Girl, I got tired of it. I was like, how many people? I'm tired of a family. I was like, I'm tired of all this damn money. I'm tired of it. <laughs> like literally, it was it was like raining. It was like raining cash everywhere, and I'm like, okay, I'm good, y'all. I'm I'm straight. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bounce some of this out because I didn't know it was gonna happen like that. So yeah, you got to be careful what you ask for too. Let me just say that you be careful what you ask for. Make sure that you're asking for it for the right reasons and for a purpose. For sure. You got to be able to hold, hold that energy, right? Um, and you might be asking for more money. Yeah. But you don't have the structure in the container to hold that level of money. And then it's not, it's not going to be sustainable. So this is when we have to really work with, you know, energetics but also yep. the practical side it gave me the ability to really create some things though and i set that thing on i set some things in motion and things have been going well for me ever since in that regard you know what i'm saying so and we no one ever talks about that no, no one ever talks about having the the structure and the container the energetic capacity to deal with what you're mm -hmm. asking for mm -hmm. like i tell people i said so let me get yes. you straight so That's you want to you're envying this billionaire right here or to see all this fortune 500 company but do you have the capacity do you have what it, what it takes to run a fortune 500 company what experience do you have have you even set up your own llc yet mm. Um, you know, I always tell people, you know, money, yes, it's, it's an energy. It is even a spirit. It's a soul. I, I channel the spirit of money sometimes and we have talks about what's going on in this dimension. But while it's an energy and a spirit, you have to create portals, channels, gateways, doors for that energy to translate and reach you in the physical. I was literally, um, working with someone today and they're like, I've been asking for more money, but they don't have a job or a business or any type of way to receive this money, right? So if you're if you're someone who's like meditating on money right now and you're working in all the beliefs and you're doing all the things that you haven't created right. a portal or a door, it's not going to come. It's not going to come. Yes. Uh, you have to create the container. Yes. In other words, guys, well, you know, to, maybe to something exist. it sells, or maybe you have some products that you want to sell that you make, or maybe you have a job and you need to get a bonus. You know, there has to be some type of avenue <laughs> or something to come in to <laughs> you to help you get to those next levels that you're trying to get to. And I do, I, I used to do a, um, I used to do this money counseling thing. This I used to do money counseling sessions with people. And after I do that one session with them, they would hit me back two weeks, two weeks later, like, yo, girl, I'm, I'm, my business is taking off. And because they were having problems with starting up, they had they wanted to do their own ener energetic healing business. And they needed to trust the process. Yes. But they had a lack mentality. So they were always scared to spend money, like scared. I'm like, look. Money has to flow. It has to flow. So that means when you get it, you also have to spend it. Now, I'm not saying for you to go out here and be stupid, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is, is that you got to learn to balance and allow that current to flow. It's a current. Let it flow. You have to let it flow. You can't just be on some, I'm going to hold on to it. Yeah. Because then you're not Absolutely. allowing it to flow. And then whatever else is supposed to come to you, you're not going to receive it. So you yeah. have to get into You got to come. You got to get into a place of trusting that process. <laughs> I I have the exact same type of thing that I do with people. Um, I call it 5D magical money makeover. And um, I was explaining to someone earlier, and I want to share this with, ev with everybody here. There are actually only five ways to create money in this physical reality. It's important for you to know these five ways to create wealth and money. 
uh, because mm-hmm. these are essentially the laws that govern the game of money within the time space reality that you've chosen to exist. Okay, it's a job. Through that, that job, you're going to get a raise or a promotion or an entirely new job. It's a business, it's going to be products or services. Um, and the continual expansion mm-hmm. of products and services to generate and in- increase income. Then you can get lucky, meaning you can find money. Someone can give you money, right? Not really that reliable. You can manifest money through luck. Um, then there's investing, but investing requires that you Boom. already have money to then expand that money. Um, And then the last one is inheritance, meaning someone like a family member or something like that is going to give you this money. There are only five ways to manifest and create money in the physical. Now, knowing that, where is it that you think you need to be focusing your energy right now? Is it that you have a job and, and the practical thing you should do is to get this bonus, this raise, this promotion or get a new job? Or is it maybe also start a side business so you can welcome in more money? Because as we know, jobs hold a certain income cap. So if you're somebody right now who's in a job and you're like trying to figure out how to make more money, but you haven't opened up another Boom. door, that's not Back. going to happen. That's the money game. That's the it's only the five game. ways. Let me ask you this. Only five ways. We're all been talking about this Fed wire thing that they're going to be pushing on the people, things of that nature. I want to get your take on the currency situation right mm-hmm. now inside the United States. So what I'm seeing right now is we're all in this ascension process that means all of the systems on this planet are also in an ascension process when we're looking at currency and money specifically you can really see this right how many people still use cash something physical right it's it's inner it's becoming more energetic it's becoming unseen it's digital it's not there uh now What's being implanted is some fear around this, but Source is actually saying there's nothing to fear because this is a part of the evolutionary process. So Source is kind of coming through transy right now. Uh, When we gave your species the monetary system that you have now, wherein you are using or were using metals and paper to represent currency and a value of exchange, we gave you that information because it supported the level of consciousness that you were at at that time. Uh, Because you are ascending and evolving and thus shifting into a higher density of light, uh, money is also doing the same thing. This is nothing to fear. We can assure you that there will be no global collapse Uh, that will create scarcity for you unless you consent to quantum shift to that parallel timeline version of Earth, wherein these things will and are taking place. So, basically, so this is saying, you get to choose where you shift within creation. You want to go to the parallel version of Earth where there's a collapse and there's these floods and these crazy chaotic things going on? That is your free will. But we're, this is is the invitation to return to some zero point neutralization and the shift where you prefer things are only going to get better things are only going to be more uh convenient boom gratitude that's what they want to say <laughs> gratitude 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 <laughs> and i'm so happy I'm, I'm so happy that no i'm saying this need this need to be talked like, about this definitely need to be talked about so did you guys hear what she said you can pick and choose your reality and your timeline and what you choose to experience (laughs) i love this live i love this live it is so positive this is so funny right now i'm looking at these comments they're just like it is I know. And you know what's so beautiful about this moment? However you feel right now, liberated, free, in love, happy, safe, secure, this is your true state of being. That's why it feels so good. 
So now you can hold this energy. We can imprint this on all of your cells to override the old programming. This is how you were designed to feel empowered, free, yes. liberated, yes. unconcerned. For everybody that's on this live, I wish you nothing but love, peace, and abundance. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Me, me too. Me as well. Ah, so many codes shared in exchange. And I just want to thank you, my beautiful divine. Yes, sister, and I appreciate you too, sis. This container I today. thank you. And your energy is much appreciated. So much love. Oh my goodness. I am definitely feeling it You're here. Well. Feeling this I'm in definitely my heart feeling right it now. here. I Love feel like I feel like here. it's just gonna be up from here on out. That's what I feel. That's just that's just that reality I'm operating in. It's gonna go. It's just gonna go up from here on out. It just gets better and better, and there's more money and more projects and more people, and it's more fun. Everything's just gonna be better. Like let me tell you how I know be it's better because <laughs> I was actually able to do a full live. I was to do a full live. So that's how I know the energy is really, really good. And it feels really, really good. I feel like there's like a barrier even over us right now. Like there's a barrier that's allowing us to have this dialogue because we needed to come together. We need to, just, we need yeah. to yeah. release these codes and express these codes so people can receive them. And I feel like this is going to change a lot of people who listen to this live. Mm -hmm. And those who choose to listen to it afterwards, I think it's going to change a lot of people. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for co-creating the space with us. I'm sure we will be doing this again and again and again. Um, so much love to everybody. And I'm just sending everybody um, a big warm hug. 